Hey guys, welcome to RK Keynotes. In the advanced Java technology module, we have done with three chapters now. The first chapter is with JDBC concepts. We have explored all the JDBC concepts with a practical demonstration. And the second chapter is about Java swings. We have explored all the swing concepts and we have implemented with a practical demonstration with a mini project. And the third chapter is about servlets. We discussed most of the servlet concepts and uh, we have implemented a mini project using JDBC connection. Also, uh, the practical demonstration was done with uh, the most important concepts. If you have not checked these playlists yet, do please check this one and try to implement the example programs. And then let me know if you have got any queries. On the top of this, I have shown you how to install ZAMP and configure it in this playlist. In today's video i'm going to talk about jsp concepts so it is going to be the fourth chapter for us so let's begin with that so jsp is basically java server pages and uh, this jsp page uh, you know it is similar to the servlet concepts basically uh, in servlets we have done a web i mean using servlets we developed a web application right so in jsp we're going to do the same it is used for to create dynamic web applications again but there are a lot of advantages when compared to servlets so that is what i'm going to explore in this particular video so this is an introduction video of jsp concepts so a jsp page we can use you know html and jsp tags so the most important point is this uh, when compared to servlet it is easier to maintain because we're going to use something like we're going to separate the design and development logic but in servlets we never do this we used to uh, process the request and response and then the logic will be written in the same file and then we do uh, create a method like do get or do post uh, in a particular servlet and then we do all these things right but here in jsp we gonna separate the design and development logic that we we gonna explore in the upcoming videos fine so both the servlet concepts and jsp concepts comes under the server side scripting all right now these tags are most important there are five tags the first tag is the comment so if you want to comment you have to use this angle brace percentage sign and then like minus minus so within that you can write something so that will be get commented fine and the second tag is about directive tag so it comes with this at the rate symbol right a special character we can use so and then the third one is about a declaration tag which comes with exclamation mark over here you can see that so whenever you want to declare a variable then you have to you know follow this and then you can use a data type and then the variable name and you can assign some value in this way so in this way you can uh, declare uh, things right and then the third one is about scriptlet tag so here uh, there is no extra special character like this at the rate and then exclamation just angle brace and percentage sign so inside that you can write basically scriptlet tag is used to write number of lines of code so in this you can you know uh, start for example this is the first line then second line third line you can continue and then you can close this at the end like this over here if if, if required for multiple lines of code fine and the last tag is expression tag so it comes with equal to sign you can see this here right so basically if you want to calculate something or if you want to write some formula so then you can use this expression tag so which will basically print even it will print the right now it will print like count so whatever the value is stored in this particular variable and it will be printed right so these are all the basic tags which you need to understand and we'll be using this in most of the programs right in the upcoming uh, demonstration i'll be showing this now this is the problem with the servlet means as i said that in a particular class file means in one servlet file what we're going to do is that we're going to accept request we're going to process the request right and then we used to keep our logic even in that particular uh, method getting it so basically this is a bad idea so like whenever we split the design and logic that would be easy to edit a particular file only no need to edit the complete servlet right 
So for that purpose, uh, we go for JSP, right? Now, JSP has got a lot of advantages. The first advantage is about custom tags, which is never possible in servlets. So here you can customize tags. You can create your own tag, even with your name, getting it. So that we're going to explore in the upcoming sessions. And because of, uh, you know, separating business logic and presentation logic, which is easier to maintain, basically, right? In servlets, we mix both, right? And the third one is faster development. Uh, yeah, here, no need to recompile and redeploy. For example, if you just, uh, you know, develop a program and then you have to run it first time. And then uh, if you want to do any changes, yes, you can do in the source code and then just save it. No need to recompile, just save and then refresh the browser. You will be getting the, you know, modifications um, will get updated basically. And using JSP, the again, the most important feature is that less number of lines so how to do that means less number of code uh, in terms of lines so we can use jstl jsp standard tag library or else custom tags and and there are many other tags which are like expression language we can use so that the number of lines of code will get reduced again we're going to explore this one uh, with a demonstration in the upcoming videos fine so this is about a jsp now here I have uh, uh, you know differentiated JSP and servlet. So one particular difference is that both are uh, you know used to create a dynamic content. Fine. Uh, now JSP is a little slower than servlet. Uh, there is a reason for this. Servlet will be faster than JSP because the servlet files are Java files basically, right? So it will be directly compiled and then a class file will get generated and then it will be executed further. But in here, there is one extra step. The JSP file will be converted as a servlet file, means a Java file, and then it will be compiled and then it will be executed. Getting it? So it goes like that. So the notable point is this. Both follows MVC architecture, model view controller. So JSP comes under view. Servlet will act as a you know controller. Of course, we discussed this in JSP custom tags are possible and in servlets, uh, there is no such facility. All right. So JSP codes means the number of lines will get reduced here in JSP, but not in the servlet. So I just want to show you this particular architecture diagram. And then you can see that uh, this is a index.html we can say and then and then there is a button. And so if you click the button, the request will go to the JSP file. Basically, this is a web server. We're gonna use Tomcat, uh, similar to servlet. And there we, and basically this is a container, right? Now, what happens here? The request goes to the servlet. I mean, uh, uh, JSP file. Then there is a translation phase. This JSP file is converted into a Java file. You can see that, right? So that that is why here it is mentioned as translation phase. This is what it will take some time. I mean, it's not a like you know, uh, it will take only a few milliseconds, right? So, uh, but there is, but this is an additional step. That's it. So now the Java file will be compiled, and then the file will get processed, and then the response will be sent to the particular user, or or else to the particular uh, you know, request. So this is the architecture of JSP. Hope uh, you you understood like where the translation phase and what is happening to the request. Fine. Now I have uh, specified the steps based on the architecture diagram. So first you have to send the request and then uh, it goes to the, the request reaches the web server and then once the request reaches, the JSP file will be converted into Java file. So that is called as translation phase, right? Now the Java file will be compiled uh, and then the class file will get created. So we call it as compilation phase. So then the class file will be executed and the output, you know, the response will be sent back to the particular client. So this is, these are the steps involved in JSP architecture. Now, uh, again, this is a simplified diagram. You can see that. Uh, similar to servlet lifecycle. So we have 
init method, service method, and destroy method. As we are going to start with JSP, you have to just use uh, you know JSP init, JSP service, and JSP destroy in this way. So <clears throat> now uh, let's get into the demo, uh, you know, demonstration, and then I'll show you how to use JSP file, right? Okay, now I'll switch to NetBeans. Just give me a minute. Okay, so now let me just start with a new project, new project, Java web, web application over here. Next, and then let's say JSP first. first demo now say next and then we're going to use uh, this tomcat and then finish so our application got created the application you can see that jsp first demo uh, we know that whenever we run a program i mean we run this particular web application um, the index.html file will be executed first, right? Yeah, you can see that. Now, uh, I don't have anything over here, no servlets, no web.xml file right now. So I want a JSP file. Let me just right click over here on web pages, fine. And then say JSP, select JSP. If not, if you don't find for the first time, you, you need to go to other. And then you have to search here as JSP, and then you will be getting it here so that you can select that. Okay. Now say next new JSP. Don't do anything over here as of now. Finish. Now, this is a JSP file, and you can see that this is a common tag. We have discussed five different tags, and this is directive tag. Directive tags are applicable for the whole page. Fine. And now, so let me say something like JSP. Okay. Now, if I run this file, now again, you know, just run. It will execute, means it will uh, execute the index.html file first, right? Now, what if I want to run new JSP file? I mean, this JSP file first. So in that case, we need to have a welcome file list tag in web.xml so what should we do for that so first we need to create a web.xml file right so right click over here even without creating the servlet we can create web.xml file so how to do that just right click new and then you can see this standard deployment descriptor if you don't find that go to other and here you can write the web for the first time right and then select this and then finish so now you will be getting this web.xml file right all right now what should i do is that i just want to use two tags the first tag is let me say welcome file list and then okay and inside this welcome file list and then you have to say welcome file tag should be used yeah that's it so now in this welcome file or tag i just need to mention the file name right uh, let me keep it like this um, so just save it i'm not going to recompile let me open okay it is not executed right so let me execute the code first i'll run the code Okay, still it is not. I'm I'm getting 404 error, which means the file is not, uh, you know, read properly. So the target resource is not disclosed or that does not exist. So what I have to do is that I need to use the extension as well. Dot JSP. That's it. So let me just save this and then go back to the browser and refresh. Now you can see that I'm getting this output from the JSP file, which means it is executing JSP 
a file first so that is the purpose of using this welcome file list so in this way you can you know line up the different files now you can write welcome file and you know another file name over here and then accordingly it will execute all right so this is a basic demonstration of a jsp application so hope you got something from this and uh, we will explore the uh, different tags uh, in the upcoming video so stay tuned if you like the video hit the like button do subscribe my channel to get more updates thank you and thanks for watching the video